Welcome to the Secrets of College Planning. I'm your host, Anthony Yuva, and today we're going to get some insight in how community colleges recruit for baseball. My guest today is Kevin Kearns. He's the head baseball coach for Mercer Community College, and welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Yeah, no problem. So usually I start my guest, uh, Kevin, is where they uh, went to college. So where did you go? Um, I'm an alumni of Mercer. Uh, I was on their 2000 World Series team, played for uh, Coach Dave Gallagher. Had a great experience there. Um, after my time at Mercer, uh, I used that opportunity to uh, move on to uh, get my degree uh, from the College of New Jersey. Also had a great playing experience there. Great. So now, uh, after you graduated from, uh, I guess, TCNJ, mm -hmm. um, how did you become the head coach at uh, Mercer Community College? Well, I got a job teaching, which is what my major was in, uh, in engineering up at Edison High School. Um, I coached two years there of baseball, um, and I always knew I wanted to be a coach. So basically, uh, you know, after two years, Matt Walski, who was a local player, uh, stand out at Rutgers, played in the minor leagues, he got the head job, and I played with him at Steiner, also another local school here, and a good friend of mine, and he asked me to be his pitching coach. Um, so I was able to you know, afford the opportunity to go back to Mercer and, and coach under, under him. Um, after five years, uh, he went in a different direction, and uh, I interviewed and was elevated to the head coaching position. Great. Fantastic. So now, uh, how well is the uh, school right now with, with baseball? I think it's in the, the best, place, uh, best place it's been in a while, doing very well. Um, this past year, we're 38-12, and 12, ranked number four in the country. Uh, more importantly, we sent 11 players to the Division I or Division II level uh, from, our, from our program last year, wow. um, including uh, another player drafted. Um, 2014, we went to the College World Series and were ranked number two uh, in the country. Um, for the past five years, we've had players drafted and um, had a team GPA of 2.9 last year. Fantastic. So now, um, community college baseball, is it different than Division One, Two, II, and Three? How do they recruit? Is there any kind of differences between that? I'm happy to ask. There's a lot of differences and there's actually a lot of misconceptions. Um, it's one of the first things we do when we have recruits down is educate them on the difference and how you know, JUCO works. Um, first of all, there's Division I, II, and III JUCO. There are no Division I junior college baseball programs in New Jersey or our region. So there's Division II, which is the highest level of baseball you can play, um, which means we have athletic scholarship money. We're allowed to sign 24 players which is, you know, is, is basically our entire team because we're allowed to carry 26 to the playoffs. Um, also, we play a 76-game schedule, whereas a lot of four-year schools, they only play 56 games. We play 76, 20 in the fall, 56 in the spring, and then we have the playoffs. So it's much more baseball. Um, we're also not limited in our contact time in the fall season. In the fall season, a four-year school only has 16 practices, whereas us, we practice for two months and play 20 games most of them double headers, and most of them against four-year schools. You know, Ryder, Kutztown, wow. Felician, and the four-year schools want to play us because they can basically recruit off of our field, and for us, we're playing, you know, we're basically in essence playing up. So it's good exposure and, uh, you know, a, a good level of competition. Um, a lot of, you know, the, the, one of the other big differences is you can get drafted. Um, you know, a lot of times people think, oh, you know, it's, it's a low-level baseball, it's a club. It couldn't be further from the truth with the, with the good programs. Um, for the past five years, we've had players drafted. Um, this past year, we had a player go in the 21st round. The year before that, we had the National Pitcher of the Year who went in the fifth round. Wow. Um, we've had several players come to us to try and get drafted. If you go to a four-year school, you have to wait until your junior year to get drafted. Whereas a, uh, if you come in as a freshman, your sophomore, you're draft eligible immediately, which gives you leverage. Mm. Um, you know, instead of having only two years to get drafted, you now have four, so you want to maximize that signing bonus. So is it more for a student that is not really sure that they can make the pro level yet? Um, a junior college is a, a better route for them to see if they're actually good enough? Um, or is that the, uh, the, the four-year school where they can't, they can't do anything until junior year better for them. How does that work? If we really bring in a blend every year, you know, we have division three caliber players on our team and we have players that probably will get drafted again this year on our team. So we have, we have a true blend. Um, 
I'd love to have all the draft eligible players or you know, you know, the opportunity to get drafted, but sometimes that's not the case. Yeah. Um, but somebody who does come in, we have experience kind of navigating them through that draft. You know, when can you sign? You know, you know, discussing a number. A lot of that money is now slotted. Um, so if you get drafted in a certain round, it's kind of predetermined what you what you can sign for. Um, but the big thing for the draft eligible players coming in is uh, gaining leverage. Meaning, if we can have them in a good place academically. They can sign with a four-year school. If they get drafted and don't get the number they want, well, then they can go on to their four-year school, and odds are they'll still get drafted again. Wow. But if they do get the number that they want, then they're in, then they're in a great place. Um, so we kind of have experience guiding them through that. But we also have players that we come in um, that come in and you know have to have to develop, and they go on to Division Three. We've had players going on to to uh, armed forces or going on to. Uh, be uh, police officers, you know, so it, it's, it's a wide range. So now how do, uh, how do you go about recruiting? What's the, what's, the, uh, what's the competition like that you're looking for? It's actually pretty, pretty intense. Um, you know, there's four-year schools out there that are signing or, you know, getting verbal commitments from sophomores in high school now. Um, you know, the, the kids are, you know, one year playing varsity as a sophomore and they're already verbal. Um, basically, we, we start the, we're bringing in juniors now, or rising juniors, which will be next year seniors, over mm -hmm. this summer. Um, we have them come to our games in the fall, we, you know, have them on campus and kind of discuss things with them, present them with their scholarships. At the four-year school level, you can uh, offer and sign. Uh, the early signing period is in the fall. For us, you can't sign until the middle of January. So we make our scholarship offers in the fall, give them time to think about it and discuss. Um, but it is actually very competitive. Um, you know, some very good junior college baseball in and around the area, uh, in our region, and the four-year schools. And what we're starting to see a lot of now is a lot of the southern schools are coming up north because uh, the feedback I'm getting from them is you have a, you have a tougher kid up here. You know, hmm. my guys, if we have there's snow, we have to go shovel the field. Now, <laughs> now can you recruit everywhere, at, even though you're a community college? Absolutely. Uh, we don't have dorms on campus. Some do. Some community colleges do. Uh, we don't, but we have our players stay in apartments. I'd say about half of our team is in apartments. We've had players from Florida, Maryland, Delaware, Massachusetts. Uh, about half of our team is from Pennsylvania. Um, so we have players in and around the state. Uh, we really try and stay within an hour and a half bubble, but we've gone out of that for special cases. And for us to put a player in an apartment, we want to make sure we're getting the, 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 right, the right character person. Yeah, that's fantastic. Now, so recruiting-wise, um, what type of player are you looking for? Do they have to have good grades? Do they, do they have to be playing in a lot of different uh, leagues? How, how does it work at the community college level? Well, a couple things we look for. One, um, there's very few student athletes that play three sports in high school anymore. But we've had a lot of success with football players, wrestlers. Um, they're mentally tough and, and strong kids. You know, if you can get through triple sessions with football, you can get through practices and the grind of our season. 76 games is a lot. Um, so we go after kids that we, look, we think are mentally tough. Um, you know, I think the more sports a kid plays, the better. So if we find a three-sport athlete who's also very good at baseball, it helps. Uh, we make sure that we cross-check with our um, travel coach, with our high school coach. Uh, we ask around. And uh, one of the biggest things we have is a lot of the players on our team have either played with these guys who are recruiting, and we ask them, would you like them to be your teammate? And a lot of times they say yes. You know, in some cases they say no, he wouldn't be a good fit here. Um, you know, it really is a, a full-time job to play collegiate baseball. Um, so, you know, we kind of make sure we cross-check on them and make sure that uh, we're getting a quality, you know, a quality person. And what's the, what's the grade level? What, what are they looking at uh, in grades to get into a school like Community College? Um, Mercer's open enrollment. So if you graduate high school, we'll accept you. Um, but we have several players, you know, that's one of the other misconceptions is that it's only for players with poor grades. Um, there's something called the NJ Stars program. Uh, for players that uh, are very, uh, very good academically, they can come to the community college. If they maintain a 3.5 GPA. They can then go on to any state school, most state schools, I should say. In New Jersey. In New Jersey, and their tuition is paid for. So they get four years of tuition for free by maintaining high academic standards and going the JUCO route. Um, several players uh, have come to us with strong grades, passed the clearinghouse, had Division I offers. They chose to come to Mercer because we can make it affordable. Um, as I mentioned, we have scholarships, so we can make the cost of school very affordable compared to most four-year schools. Um, we had a player recently who was offered half scholarship to a four-year school, and it was still $25,000 for him. 
Right. Well, we offered him half scholarship and it cost him $1,000 a semester. <laughs> so he made the decision to come to us and realizing that that school's still going to be there after two years and still interested. However, after 150 games, playing in the playoffs, two years of actually playing and not sitting the bench behind somebody and developing the weight room, you know, he's now playing down uh, at a school in Tennessee where you're an 85% scholarship. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, we just try and educate the, the players that, that we're recruiting on, you know, their options. Yeah, so, so now a, a two-year school might be beneficial to a lot of parents financially can't afford college level. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're looking at uh, average colleges probably somewhere around thirty-four, thirty-six thousand $36,000 a year uh, for a four-year college, Correct. Know, right? Um, so maybe going the community route for the first two years saves them a heck of a lot of money to then go on to a four-year school. Here's something I like to mention to our, our recruits and our, our, our current players is, you know, Mercer is about $4,400 a year. So one thing that's going to do, not only are you going to save money, but there's a lot of value there. Um, we're going to make sure that the classes that they're taking transfer out to the four-year school that they're going to. Um, you know, if you're taking calculus at Mercer, calculus is going to transfer to Stanford, Princeton, Miami, wherever you happen to go. The other thing that that's going to do is after two years of playing baseball, developing, increasing your exposure, some doors are going to open for them that maybe weren't open for them out of high school. What that also is going to do is we talk about the financial piece is you just saved a ton of money in the first two years. You don't necessarily have to be picky on the on where you're going to get your four year degree from right. because you're only pay, you're basically paying half of that now. Does that make right. sense? So you know you are saving you save all that money on the front side where go to the school that you really want to go earn your degree from. You have a comfort level with on the back end. So now what's the um, what's the expectation of these kids when they when they come into school? What, what are they looking at as a full year regimen at Mercer Community College? Well, most of our guys, like I said, we sign, we make our offers in the spring. We sign uh, throughout the spring. Uh, we make our offers in the fall, sign throughout the spring. Um, once they graduate, we have a full-time strength coach, uh, John Kalinowski, uh, does a great job. He used to be a head strength and conditioning coordinator for Georgia Southern football. Uh, he works our guys out twice a week, all year long. He puts together a lifting packet for them, which they're expected to follow all summer. We have seven coaches on our staff. Our coaches go and make sure, you know, we try and go see our guys play throughout the summer. Um, and then we start practice in the fall. In the fall, we have 20 games. We basically go eight to nine weeks. Coach Cows works our guys out twice a week uh, before practice. And one of the reasons we do that is, you know, one of the challenges we have is half of your team is freshmen every year. So we see that a lot of the freshmen have trouble with double headers. We play 42 double header, uh, wow. you know, I mean, 22 double headers uh, each year. So it's, it's a lot of games. So Coach Cows works them out before practice. Then they come practice a little bit tired to get used to that mental grind. Um, then after the fall season, um, we end with our scout day, uh, which is great exposure. Uh, we had over 30 schools and uh, all the major league teams there last year, which is real good exposure for our guys. Wow. Uh, we play a tough fall schedule, like I mentioned. You know, this year we're playing Ryder, Kutztown, who won the PSAC last year. Uh, very tough schedule. We then give them a week off. Go get, your, go get your grades, everything in order, let your body rest, because they have study hall throughout the fall, throughout the spring. Uh, and then we start our off-season training, which is five days a week, two days with Coach Cows, two days strength training. And with Coach Cows, they're doing speed and agility. And then on Fridays, we swim. Uh, before I was the head coach, I mentioned I was the pitching coach, and I'm a big advocate of getting them in the pool, getting them out of their comfort zone. And by the time Friday comes around, they're a little bit tired from actually really competing and working in the weight room. Wow. And then uh, middle of January, we start practice, and we play our 56-game schedule. And uh, you know, the goal every year is to try and win a national championship. And so, and then it just repeats itself for the second year. It's a, it's a, it's a big cycle. Wow, that's yeah. fantastic. So, so now recruiting-wise. Um, what's your, what's the amount of kids that you're recruiting to get down to the number of kids that you actually need? Is there a high amount of kids that you're actually looking at? Um, one thing, one thing that's nice about the Division II level and being able to offer scholarships is we don't have to over-recruit. A lot of schools over-recruit, um, especially at the Division III level uh, where there's no roster limits. We don't have roster limits. Um, but a lot of schools will bring in, they'll bring in 70 kids. And what they'll do with those 70 kids is that's 70 tuitions. So they may only be able to take 30. What we try and do is we have 24 scholarship offers. We know that those 24 players are, are assigned a letter of intent. It's on the website. We know they're coming. 
So we don't need to over recruit. Um, we usually bring in about 35 that we actively pursue and recruit. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes we have walk-ons that, that, that you know, stay with us um, during tryouts, but you know, we try and keep a number around 35. Um, you know, it gives us room for some injuries or you know, if there's any academic issues and gives us the depth that we need to uh, you know, enter squad and practice and so forth. Uh, but we're allowed to take 26 to the playoffs. Oh. So now you were talking about uh, Clearinghouse. Um, Tell the families out there what, what that is. The clearinghouse is basically to go to a four-year school, um, to be you know accepted and, and, and offered to be offered a scholarship and accept it. You have to you have to qualify. Um, it's a sliding scale based on your SATs and your GPA. And if you qualify for it, you're given a clearinghouse number. Um, players who are very talented and maybe are worthy of a scholarship but haven't met those academic requirements, the next best option is to go to the junior college route. To go, you know, with us, you know, we make sure that we monitor them academically. Each coach of our, each of our seven coaches is assigned multiple players, you know, uh, class checks and mandatory study halls that they can earn their way out of if they're doing well. Um, and you know, once they graduate, then they're automatically what they call the, you know, the four-year schools call the golden ticket. If they graduate with their associates, they can go. They're open to any school that they'd like to go to. So now, what what has been the ratio of uh students that are coming into your school, go to a four-year college afterwards, continue to play baseball, go and just continue to go to a four-year college and don't play baseball, or go to the uh, major leagues draft program where they're going into the minor leagues and so on. What, what's the ratio that you see over the years that you've been there? Uh, five years as head coach. Um, one of our goals, all the players, first of all, that's part of the recruiting piece. You know, we need kids that are baseball players, not kids that just want to play baseball. It's not easy to play for us. We demand a lot of them. Um, and like I mentioned, we're trying to win a national championship every year. It's, you know, it's, it's very serious and it's extremely competitive. Um, you know, for the, five, uh, for the past five years, we've had a player drafted, um, all of them being pitchers. Um, but last year, we sent 11 players, Division One or Division Two and uh, I think three or four players to the Division three level. Wow. So all of our guys, we want to make sure continue playing. Now, if they happen to go into a career, whether it's the minor leagues or you know, a professional career, that's fine, but that's one of the big, uh, you know, that's basically how my job's evaluated, is how many players did you send on to four-year schools, what was your GPA, um, so on and so forth, not necessarily wins and losses. So we encourage all of our players, and we actually take a very active role in that. Um, Moving into their sophomore season, we sit down with each one of the players, um, then possibly their families, and if they're a draft prospect, we kind of start that discussion. Um, if they're looking at four-year schools, you know, we kind of go over their list with them, and we add schools to the list, and then I actively reach out to those schools. Um, those emails, calls, and texts from me mean a lot more than just from a random player. Yeah. Odds are we've already sent a player there successfully. Um, or we have a good reputation, or our players go on there and represent us well. So, um, you know, it, it's, a, it's a good springboard, and we're very active in it. And what's the, uh, what's the amount of time that you, you put in? Because you said that you're also a high school uh, teacher. Correct. So how, how does that work with uh, coaching at, at, the, at Mercer Community College? Uh, I'm very fortunate that I have several of my staff that's on campus throughout the day. Um, just for things that are going on, study hall checks, um, class checks, you know, it rained the night before, how does the field look? So um, I'm very fortunate to have a, I have a great staff, some guys that have played with me uh, or been with me for several years, and uh, they take an active role, um, almost like an associate head coach. They do a great job, and I, I really rely on them. They really make it happen. Um, when I get out of work, I come immediately to practice, and, and, and we start, and, and we get after it. Um, you know, Mondays are typically our off days, with Saturday and Sunday being, you know, games or practices. So now, what are some of the things that um, high school uh, players need to, need to have? Um, do, they, do they have to play outside the high school team? Uh, is that a mandatory type of thing, where they have to play on multiple different teams out there? Um, or is it good that they're just playing high school? Um, to me, that would be a red flag if they didn't play in the summer. Um, you know, if there's an injury or something like that, that's, that's separate. But, uh, you know, with us playing 76 games and then our guys play in the playoffs and then our guys play in summer ball, it really is a year-round, you know, it really is a year-round thing. So um, we want to be able to see those guys in the summer. Um, 
that's when we're not playing. So, you know, when uh, the high school season's going on, sometimes with us playing 56 games yeah. and travel, sometimes it's tough to get out and go see these players. Um, so in the summer, it's a great opportunity for us to go watch as many games as we can. So them playing in the summer is, is paramount. And what what are some of the what are some of the um, organizations that are out there that kids can play in the summertime? Uh, there's Legion, and there's pretty much travel ball. Um, there's a lot of travel ball. There's showcases. Um, there's the All Star Baseball Academy showcases. Tons of sh showcases right up there in Diamond Nation, Huntington County, Staten Island showcases, showcases down in uh, Maryland. Wow. Pretty much showcases uh, constantly going on. Um, tournaments going on. Um, one big thing that we try and do is we always try to make sure we attend the uh, New Jersey State underclass game. Um, but there's tournaments in Pennsylvania. It's there's there's a lot of baseball going on in the summer. So if, if if kids out there are playing baseball, these are some of the things that they should be doing to get recognized at the college level. Correct. The one thing I would tell parents and and kids is if they're good, they'll be found. We'll find them. Um, <laughs> You know, there's a lot of money that, that's being spent on those things, but if they're good, we'll find them. Mm -hmm. um, so, but you know, it definitely helps exposure playing, uh, you know, travel ball, especially Legion. Um, you know, we have a lot of incoming guys that are, are still playing Legion. Um, so that, you know, just the fact that they're playing, is, you know, we'll find them. That's great. So, um, are you actively out there uh, recruiting in, in certain areas? Is is it is it just around here that you're doing it, or? Do you find kids, you know, all the way down in Florida or California or things like that? Is there a way of finding those type of kids? We have it structured, um, you know, where I oversee all the recruiting. We have a database. You know, everything's electronic where we can uh, we monitor when we've sent letters, when we've made calls, uh, notes, comments, you know, when they visit it and so on and so forth. Is there all for pending? So we have that all on, uh, electronically on a database. Um, I oversee the monitoring. Uh, each coach is in charge of a certain area. Some coaches, I have one coach uh, who's in charge of all of Pennsylvania. I have another coach who's in charge of Huntington County, Somerset, and North Jersey. Wow. Um, I have another coach who just handles Burlington and South Jersey. Um, we get emails from Puerto Rico. We get emails from Florida, Georgia, all over. Um, you know, we try and stay within a, a two-hour bubble, but we've had players on a team from Massachusetts and Florida if they're, if they're the right fit. Now, do you also play against other community colleges? Correct. Um, we don't. We only play four-year schools in the fall. Um, in the in the spring, we play all the other JUCOs uh, in and around the area. Multiple trips down to Maryland, which has a strong region as well, um, and then we do our spring trip down to uh, Myrtle Beach, where we play teams from all over the country. Really? Wow, that's fantastic stuff that yeah. you got going on there. Um, so, what ends up happening with the the students um, that? Are, are focusing on academics but play baseball. Um, what do you do with those type of students? Is there is there something that goes on at the school for those students? Well, we have most, I would say most of our kids, our, our student athletes are very high academic achievers. Um, you know, whether they've transferred in or we've recruited them. Um, you know, we, one, give them the opportunity to earn their way out of study hall if they have a 3.5 GPA or higher. So that's a big motivator for a lot, for a lot of guys. Um, then one of the things that we talk to them about when they come in is don't limit your options. You know, they can have a 2.0 GPA at any school and be eligible. But the difference is you need to move beyond Mercer and use Mercer as a springboard to another opportunity. And a 2.0 GPA is going to limit those opportunities. Also around a 3.0 is where a lot of um, academic aid comes in. So if a coach is able to bundle academic aid with uh, athletic scholarship aid, that's when you can put a nice package together for them. So these are things we try and educate them on, and, and, and we, really, we really try and monitor their academics with progress reports and study halls and so forth. And do you see, um, do you see a lot of students out there that come from um, um, four-year colleges and transfer to a community college and then go back to a four-year college? The Division One and Two transfer rates in baseball are higher than they've ever been before. Um, I mentioned to you, we just uh, off air, we had six players contact us from the Division One ranks about transferring in last year wow. um, after the fall season. Um, why that is, I'm, I'm not necessarily sure, but I know that the, the we're constantly getting calls for for transfers and so forth, and. We have experience guiding those players through through the transfer process. You know whether it's obtaining their release, 
um, what they need to do academically to go back to the Division I level. Um, there's a 4-2-4 rule where if a four-year student goes to a four-year college and then a junior college, then back to a four-year college for him to accept the scholarship at the Division I level, he needs to graduate. So we want to make sure that they're taking the correct class and staying on track so that they don't limit their options. Gotcha. Okay. Well, uh, we're coming to the end of our show. And uh, usually what I ask my guests is, um, what advice do you want to give the parents out there that their kids um, are, are, are looking at a community college as, as, a, as a, you know, a direction for them? Um, the, I'm a big advocate of the junior college route. I'm, I'm a, I like to think that I'm a success story of the junior college route. Um, I was not able to get into the College of New Jersey um, or play there out of high school. And I had a, you know, I had a great experience playing in high school. Um, you know, we were on a very good team, um, won the state title. I wasn't ready to go there academically. I, I went to, uh, to Mercer and had a, had a great experience. Um, you know, I think hopefully I was able to open some eyes about some of the misconceptions there. Um, the, the cost, the financial piece is probably the, the biggest thing, the biggest reason to go there. Um, you know, because it, it allows you after your time at the junior college route, you can pick the school that you want and you're basically paying half the price. Um, you know, and there's junior colleges that you could go and, you know, they're all, they're all over. You, and some of them have dorms, some of them, a lot of them have football, you know, especially they're all around the country. So I would say don't limit your options. And, you know, I know it's nice to go away at the four-year school, but, uh, you know, if the financial piece is playing into it, you know, definitely consider junior college route. Great. Well, thank you very much for coming. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Yeah, no problem. So you've been watching The Secrets of College Planning. I'm your host, Anthony Uva. Until next time.